Dr. Bradford, you have talked, too, of your of your cooperation with the McGovern people at the Dallas Conventions last Saturday, mm -hmm. and you said, if I may quote, that both of you have a common hatred of pathological moderation. The center has been under attack this political year, and I wonder if you could tell me why. Well, what are the problems with moderation? What makes it pathological in your mind? Well, I'm mocking their uh, uh, remarks made to me by friends of mine uh, about my representing. It's kind of like the romantic riotous remark. Uh, friends of mine who said we were pathological conservatives. I, I don't think we're any more pathological than the people who uh, are determined to hold on to uh, their political influence and sell it. That the mood of the country is not like that right now. That it's, it's not a, in a brokerage mood. Uh, and I think our people and the McGovern people, though they share very little, they do share this. Uh, they uh, preference for straightforwardness. Uh, feeling that politics should represent some kind of principle rather than just maneuvering. And uh, I think that the center is eroding in Texas now because the center has been, uh, it has been trying to undertake something that's fundamentally immoral. What is that? And, and, and that is uh, 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 it's trying to hold itself back and broker and play for power and, and uh, not represent, uh, uh, not be honest about what position, what political position it represents. What position would you say it does really represent? No, I, I, I let them speak for that. I, I, I do know this, that, uh, of course, there are a lot of people who voted uncommitted in the precincts and, and at the, uh, 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 the Senatorial District conventions because uh, they were being loyal to old friends, and I admire that principle. Uh, as an old-fashioned Southerner, I have to understand that. And I think many of them were... Uh, uh, people who didn't want to make a choice uh, among the possibilities available. But I'm talking specifically about the leadership here and the people who advise them to do this. And uh, I'm not going to name names, but it's all altogether obvious. I think off down the road was uh, an effort to, to, bring, uh, to create a group called Democrats for Nixon. Uh, I hope that's dead now. I think maybe we put a good big hole in it. I think we'll put a bigger hole in it in San Antonio when the old Johnson Connolly machine gets the same treatment that uh, their friends got here in Dallas uh, if they don't agree uh, uh, to accept the mandate of the people in all the different directions that it went. Dr. Bradford, you spoke of yourself just a few moments ago as an old-fashioned Southerner. And I wonder, does this characterize the Wallace movement to some extent? I know he's done very well beyond Southern borders. Everyone knows that now. But what does the South mean to his campaign at this point? Well, I think that uh, what we're doing really is uh, uh, making Southern politics national. I think we're in the process of uh, exporting something that has its roots in the traditional position of Southern leadership, even from the time of the founding of the Republic. With people like uh, John Randolph of Roanoke, Taylor of Caroline, which was not laissez-faire, uh, something which was interrupted at times, but. Uh, has still always remained alive in the South and now has a national constituency. Uh, I like to say that uh, the last time we crossed Mason and Dixon's line, it was with bayonets, and that was a mistake. And this time we cross it with persuasion.